the five C's. The good thing about the challenge is that it follows a natural sort of viral idea that you actually need one sender and one receiver to actually you know, complete the challenge. The trick is to get that third person involved. So how do you do that? Well, there are two rules. First, you limit the number of people you can challenge. Secondly, you lim limit the time in which the challenge needs to be completed. So what does this mean? Well, limit the number of people you can challenge. Well, think about it. If I get to challenge everyone to something, does that challenge really feel as serious? as if you get to only challenge one person to do the same thing? I don't know. What we found is that if you make the limitations like maximum five people and add that little, like little word, maximum five people, you can challenge maximum five people, then that's you know, good enough. The fewer you can make it, don't make it less than two because then you only have that one-to-one -one relationship, but five people, then you're in a good place. Right? So, a big viral a year or one and a half year ago had three people that you could challenge. Very good with limitation. Second part is limit it in time. And this goes back to you know, the conversion formula and incentive to do something. So think about it, if I challenge someone and the one I challenge will lose if they do not complete the challenge within a certain set of minutes, hours or days, then you add an incentive for them to actually complete the challenge right away. And this is great, because if you don't have that thing, they will postpone this response and they will probably never do it. So you limit the number of people you can challenge and then you limit the time in which they can complete the challenge. If you add those two rules to essentially any creative that involves a challenge, then you're in a much better space to get this to go viral than you would otherwise. So, that's the rule or perspective of the challenge, making you go viral.